Hello friends, this is Michael Kanadis, and we are back with another segment of Gay Gardens. So um, we started this out not knowing really where we were going to go with it, but uh, since our friends out there are enjoying it, we're going to keep, keep trucking with our Gay Gardens videos. Uh, they've made a lot of uh, headway. It seems like it's been a, a long time, but it really, really hasn't. Uh, we're just wrapping up the three big three getting done, which is the the roof, which is a, one of the most important features on a, any historic building, any new building. If you don't have a good roof, um, there's no point of doing anything else. Uh, repairing the chimneys, which was a lot of fun to see. Um, those being repaired, and then the you wouldn't think that a porch could um, take so much time and, and effort, but that's coming along really well. Um, the house is pretty well cleaned out. We still have quite a bit of work to do on the outbuildings, but we're, we're making headway. So what we're sharing today is uh, treasures for the farm. Both David and I are collectors. We're also adults. We know that there's a time where uh, even if you are shown something that's bright and pretty, uh, maybe you can't afford it right now. And when you start to do these big, big steps like roofs and whatnot, uh, the flub-a-dubs have to uh, go to the side. But uh, as I said, we're collectors and we've managed to collect a little more than we have space for. So I'm going to show you some uh, uh, treasures for the farm. First thing I want to talk about is uh, David has informed me that we are going to wallpaper the farm. Uh, and I asked him, how do you feel about, feel about wallpapering the farm? No one ever likes the wallpaper after uh, you're done with it. And he told me, I don't care. So when we're done with it, someone can re-wallpaper it, take it down, whatnot. But one of the treasures that we've had for many, many years and never had a place to use it is actually we have two sets of Chinese export wallpaper that were part of an estate of a very famous lady designer named Nell Curry. And those of you that are aficionados of interior decorators, she is the decorator to the decorator. She is one that people really admire. And she was very busy in the last, uh, last century. Uh, and part of that, uh, David and I uh, knew her. She would go to our local auctions and anything she wanted to buy, she bought it no matter what. Uh, this was from her, this whole set of, there's actually, we believe, two rooms of wallpaper. So what we're going to do is ultimately, we've never unrolled it all, but we will take it back to the farm and we're going to unroll it out on the grass and see what the pattern is. So there's usually with this type of wallpaper, there's more sky because when they make it, they don't under, they don't know exactly how tall your ceilings are. So there's a good two rooms, hopefully, but this is the chance to use it. And um, we were inspired by this, by the um, Henry uh, Sleeper Davis home in um, New England. And in this whole collection, there's also this bit of treasured wallpaper, which I think is fairly early and there's just one roll and I'm it's upside down as I'm rolling it but hopefully we'll be able to put this in the back of a cupboard or something it's just amazing this is all hand painted Chinese wallpaper made for Europeans so this this will be at least one room in the farmhouse and perhaps we could do a, a Chinese tea, tea house with the rest of it because now it's the time to be used. Now I'm going to move on to paper and since we're in paper I'm going to show you some more paper. This is a really wonderful um, uh, box spot done by uh, we believe by uh, Narcissa Thorne 
of the famous Thorn Rooms, and she did a lot of decorative items for the home. Uh, you know, the, the, the miniature rooms that she did were very, very pricey, but there was a whole line of decorative items, and this is one of her pieces. And we have never had a place for this in our uh, home in, here in the Monterey Peninsula. Then we're really, really lucky that uh, we received these candlesticks as a gift uh, from um, the famous roadshow fame, Marshall Martin, and they'd actually belong to another friend of ours, uh, Madame Kane, also known as Sally Kane, who is really at the forefront of um, bringing great items from Europe to America and really changed the way people collected. So it's kind of nice to have something from our friend Sally, but gifted by Marshall. Now, another thing that we've had for decades are, is this, oops, <laughs> nobody's hurt. Uh, decades is this piece that this goes on the fireplace. So you would uh, uh, put it at the edge of the fireplace and it would dress the fireplace. Uh, we believe it's a little uh, bigger than we need. So all we'll do is we'll fold it in one and it's good to go. But this is a beautiful chinoiserie design with uh, fantastic tassels. So it'll be nice to use this. We bought this in Paris many, many, many years ago, hoping someday to have a place for it. Right now, there are no functioning bathrooms in the farmhouse. Uh, and that's why we were desperate to save our, our outhouse from the trees falling in on it. But uh, ultimately, we will have some nice uh, bathrooms. And one of them, we will use this Jasperware, um, which is a, a lovely, they're lovely pieces. And it's really fascinating to see how it's made and the history of uh, 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 Joshua Wedgwood, who created it. Um, these are uh, 19th, uh, 19th, early 20th century pieces, but they're absolutely functional. This, this is a perfect shape for a vase, but it could also be, uh, you could put, uh, it's the perfect size for Q-tips. These could be cotton balls. Um, this is a pin tray. Uh, so they're very nice things. Um, they're right now available, but if you really get into looking at it and open your eyes and see the beauty of it. The, the acorn motif, which is for longevity and strength. And then of course the muses and uh, on the uh, uh, vase piece of pooties. It's really uh, lovely stuff and it's a great time to buy um, these types of pieces. You can get them the same price as a lunch at Starbucks. Um, I would actually tell you I prefer, they have a certain green that they do that I love, but the blue is nice too. And then we have some just very interesting decorative pieces that we've had for a long time. And this is actually a push plate for a door, but I couldn't resist it because it's got this um, floral motif that's out of this world. Um, and then um, we've managed to stockpile a lot of candlesticks and candle holders because if you're in the country, you need them. And this is a really beautiful quality piece. And as we struggle here all the time with the candles, um, the older your pieces are, you're going to find that they are not standardized to uh, candles of today because they made them in their homes. And if you followed our videos in the past, you know that I love uh, Majolica. And this is not a, as old as some of our other pieces, but this would be ideal in the, the same room as the um, uh, a, a scenic wallpaper. So that's what well, this will go. I love chickens. And uh, this is another piece of Majolica. Uh, but this is not the biggest, of course. They, there's much bigger pieces of Majolica than this, but it's a pretty epic uh, chicken. I think if we saw a chicken 
um, or hen this size, it would be pretty scary. But it's um, a, a terrine, a soup terrine. So you would make your chicken uh, a soup, and then you would use that to serve it in. It'd make quite the quite the statement. And it's a departure for me because it's uh, Portuguese, which I'm a part Portuguese, and it's. It, that'll add a little to our Majolica collection to have something that's Portuguese. And then uh, I can't resist uh, good needlework. I don't do it myself, but I am a huge fan of people that do. And this is a, a beautiful pillow with really wonderful work in it. And, and that could go lots and lots of places. And then one of the things that David and I collect uh, is paper mache, and this is actually, actually um, paper that's stacked upon itself with glues and various um, additives and then turned into practically wood. And these are probably little uh, pin dishes. And it's almost always beautifully painted with a, a black background. Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's green, but, but most of, mostly you see black. And they made furniture and all kinds of decorative items. And we're fi filled up at home with no room for not even those uh, pin trays. So those will go to the farm. Then I wanna talk about flowers because the name of the property is Gay Gardens. I want you to think about this for a second. There was a time not that long ago that flowers were absolutely seasonal. Only people that had, you know, were lucky enough to have fantastic greenhouses could have flowers. So I love the imagination of uh, people that wanted to give a flower memorial or uh, decorate their houses with flowers, they made them out of paper. Beads, porcelain, these are actually tin. These are French tin flowers. And I think that there's just something about them that's, um, you know, the, the colors have faded enough. They've gotten a little bit of rust um, and, and there's a beauty to it to think of taking a tin snip and turning it into a rose, I think is absolutely fascinating. Um, then I'm gonna go next to these candlesticks. On this table, there's only two things that we have bought recently because we're, we're being good, because we've got all those things to pay. And I could not resist these candlesticks. They're made by a French company that did tableware mostly. That's what they were known for. And it was founded in 17, uh, or 1773 and closed in 1848. So these are fairly early pieces. And they're actually soft porcelain, which that doesn't usually survive so well but uh, somehow they've made it in, in beautiful condition. And it's a very unusual color to have this burgundy in China paint. You don't see that very often. It almost has a little bit of brown in it. Um, so those, we bought those to commemorate the triumph of getting a roof on the place, which was a big, big step. And then I'm gonna to move to these pieces, which are a pair of 18th century um, French, well, probably continental, they could be French or Italian, uh, mirrors with the original um, uh, glass in them. And they're all handmade, and this is all hand pounded and, and, and chased. Um, kind of, you know, what Louis XVI would have had, but theirs would have been much more sophisticated and um, this is kind of like a middle-class version, which I think has a nice little um, uh, feel to it. And it's great because if you want to reflect some light, but you don't want necessarily to have, you know, the back of your head showing in a mirror, this is ideal. So those, those we've had for years and years and years. 
Um, this is one a, a piece that David found, and I will uh, admit to everyone, everything on this table, I have no idea where, it, where it's going to go. This piece, we know exactly where it's going to go, and this is a really, a, I think, a monumental piece of Amari, fairly early, probably 1850s, 60s. Um, I'm shocked that there's any clay left in the world when you pick this up, but it, it it's a, 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 a stick holder, can, uh, canes and umbrellas, and um, got, it has beautiful beautiful coloring and will really brighten up a spot. That we know exactly where it's, where it's going to go. The other thing that um, uh, we're going to use is we do have built-in closets of original closets to the house, but the closets then are not really uh, suitable to put to today's clothes. They're very narrow because you hung your dresses and, and coats on hooks. So we'll probably do things like this is our collection of antique shoes, and we have more. And we'll probably put those in to protect them, but also to display them when I have uh, my friends that are interested in, in um, uh, you know, clothing and textiles, I'll have them to, to show. These two pairs are men's house slippers. And you can see these are just spectacular, beautifully made, 19th century. And they're monogrammed with M.A. Uh, on them. So whoever that was once upon a time, they're monogrammed with M.A. Um, probably mid-19th mid century, both pairs. This pair of ladies' uh, slippers, not house slippers, slippers, these are fairly early. I would say probably uh, 1800 to 1810. But what is very interesting in how I'm coming with that date is there was a time when shoes, there wasn't a right and a left. So you can see that there is not a right and a left. They are identical. It's just as the foot has, um, they've worn into the shoes, it kind of creates that. But the actual sole is um, one size, one size fits all. Then this is a very uh, glamorous piece, and this belonged to a very good friend of ours that we are handling her estate. And uh, we decided to, to buy one thing uh, uh, from the estate, and it's this clock. And she had a love of poodles. And I grew up with poodles, and I, I don't I haven't had a poodle as an adult, but I have a soft spot. So you, there you have a Cupid being um, pulled by a poodle, and I believe in French they're called corlans, I believe. So that's a kind of a nice tribute to our friend, and she would love the concept of the farm. And then being old-time antique dealers, we have a lot of wonderful little... Um, bric-a-brac pieces, and this is a furniture mount, which sometimes you just need that little pop of gold. So this, uh, this will use, and then I can use it as a uh, letter holder because you just pull her face up and you can use it as a letter holder. And then there's lots of little other mounts. These have kind of a nice uh, uh, patina to them, and we will use these somewhere. I mean, we could put a towel on them or who knows what. So then um, I should point out that for decades and decades, uh, we have held on to this fantastic needlepoint carpet. And it is a very important piece. Uh, it, it has some wear to it. And um, somehow that's kind of kept it with us because we didn't sell it because it wasn't in good enough condition to sell it. Uh, we didn't use it because of our, you know, our, our collection of bulldogs, and you know how dogs like to dig towards China. So this is going to go towards the uh, into the farm, and it needs some repair. And I've never had the time to repair it, but if I go back for a week and um, want to get bored, I have a project to to mend it. But we are absolutely going to use it. And then 
I have a hobby of, of music and classical music and opera, and David has uh, agreed that I can have a music room. So I'm going to bring all of my musical memorabilia, which are uh, old time um, uh, autographs and various artifacts, uh, will go into the music room. And then we have something really important that, that we're going to put into the music room. And I'm not going to show you all of them because I don't want to get kicked off of um, YouTube. But these are a study of the great uh, Max Lorenz, an incredible tenor of the uh, last century, early part of the century, into the very, very dark age of um, World War II and an absolutely fascinating life that he uh, led. And these are all important sketches done by a very famous illustrator uh, of that time frame. So those will go in the music room after they've been uh, framed, which they need to to help preserve them. And then sometimes, you know, um, David has reminded me a few times that uh, it's um, not the, uh, the, the Gay Gardens is not the Chateau of Versailles. And then I remind him, well, maybe a little bit. So here we have a, a nice little Borghese um, study of um, Marie Antoinette as a, as a little girl. And this will go in into the farm, somewhere you, where you just need a little pop of green. And I will tell you that I get mad at all of you for over cleaning and overdoing. And I, I rubbed off the patina off of her forehead. So I'm going to fess up to that and have David uh, do a little repair on that before she goes. But that will give a nice little pop of green where you need that uh, color green. So I think I have explained to you everything we've got right now. It is a mixed bag. It doesn't seem like anything goes with anything, but it'll all find the right place in the farm. And I think that we can kind of get the concept of what the colors uh, probably will be. So anyways, uh, Jason will be back with you with more videos. I know that he's been very busy with all of that, and we appreciate that. And I'm glad you've all gotten to know Mr. Butler and his crew of really hardworking people that are help, helping bring Gay Gardens uh, back to life. Anyways, bye-bye, friends. <laughs>